Well, praise the Lord, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we have made the decision to rejoice and be glad in this day. What a privilege it is for us to come into your homes or wherever it is that you are viewing uh, this lesson on tonight. We are grateful that you have taken the opportunity, man, to uh, hear what thus saith the Lord through this vessel of God. We appreciate it. Before we go into our lesson tonight, we certainly want to pray for those that are sick and shut in, those that are challenged in the faith, those that may be going through uh, emotional situations or in relationships that are challenged. We ask God's blessings to be upon you. Every day that we are alive, it is a blessing. As I always say, I thank God for one more day walking on the top soil. So we love God today and we love the people of God and trust something will be said tonight that will help you to grow in Christ. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have tonight to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Father, we pray for those that are in lack tonight, those that may be lacking in health, lacking in, in strength. Father, those that are challenged in their homes or challenged in their bodies, challenge Lord Jesus in their finances. Father, we pray for each of them tonight and ask that your will will be done and that you will just bless them, Lord. Open up your windows of heaven and pour them out blessings that there is not room enough to receive. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for a reasonable portion of health and strength. And we ask tonight as we go into this lesson that you prepare the hearts of your people to receive your word. God, give me the, the pen. Let my tongue be the pen of a ready writer, Lord. Orchestrate our, our thoughts that we might present what you would have us to say to your people. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, brothers and sisters, tonight we're going to continue, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to continue uh, with our lesson about getting to know our God. And our main focus is going to be from the book of Exodus. Now, a recap from last week lets us know that God uh, defines himself by his relationships with people. It is wonderful to know that uh, God seeks relationships with flawed people, imperfect. Uh, you will never find a perfect pastor. You'll never find a perfect church. You'll never find a perfect uh, spouse. You'll never find perfect children. And God, a man, has not seen us as being perfect, but he chose us when we were at our lowest state. And God saw something in us, and he forged a relationship with each of us, and this we ought to thank God for. Uh, God relates to each of us in a unique way. When God deals with me, he comes in a way that, that George understands it. He comes, uh, when he came to Abraham, uh, or Abram rather, he came to him uh, at a level that he could understand him. When he speaks to Moses, he speaks to him at a level that he could understand. When Jesus spoke to his disciples, he spoke to those that were farmers. And when he spoke to the farmers, he used a man language that they would understand. If he's speaking to someone who is an educated individual, he speaks on a level that they can understand. He speaks to us, a man, through our culture. Each of us uh, may have come from different backgrounds. Well, the unique thing about God is, is that God knows each of us and knows how to get through to each of us. 
we spoke and said that uh, that uh, each of these, when we look back at uh, the fathers uh, of the faith, and when God began to deal, uh, he brought out a people. He began with Abram, Abraham, uh, before named Abram, before he changed his name. And he spoke to Isaac, and then he spoke to Jacob. And uh, each of these, uh, from Jacob to Joseph, and Joseph, a man, as the, 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 um, the children of Israel began to expand as a family and as a nation, God dealt with them. And we talked about how uh, they got into the land of Egypt and how God dealt with them there. So we were saying <clears throat> when it came to them that had gotten to Egypt, uh, that here came a, a generation that needed to know God for themselves. Um, uh, as we will learn, uh, after they had been there for a while, the Bible says that, that um, Joseph died out and his brethren died out. And that generation that had that relationship with God or knew God in a certain way, all of them died out. So it's important for us as parents, as grandparents, that we don't let our knowledge of God die out, that we've got to speak it to our children and to our grandchildren and to our great-grandchildren, the goodness of God. We've got to let them know about our God. Yes, they will know them for uh, know him for themselves, but it's important for that seed to be planted in each of them that a man, one planteth, another watereth, God gives the increase. So that that seed is being planted and watered, amen, every day of their lives. The scripture told us that, that uh, in, in the Mosaic law, uh, when it came to speaking about God and the things of God, uh, he went as far as to say, put it on uh, the, the, the doorpost, put it on the lentils, put it, put it uh, where they see it. Talk about it. Talk about our God in the morning. Talk about our God in the evening. Talk about God when you're on vacation. Talk about God when you're at church. Uh, these are things that are so vitally important, especially in the time in which we live, where, where we are bombarded with so many distractions, so many distractions, whether it be a man television, whether it be a man uh, different games that, that people get involved in, whether it be uh, football teams, basketball teams, baseball teams, getting involved with so many things that we, we have done a disservice to our children, to our grandchildren, to those that are in the church and those that are out of the church. What is the, the disservice? We're not letting them know about our God. They are bombarded by things for, for, for perhaps uh, uh, 16 uh, hours out of the day that they're receiving all of this information from a different source. And they're not learning about our God. And for them to survive what's coming next in a man history, for them to survive, it is, it is important, amen, that we let them know about Jesus. So speak to them about Jesus. Let them know, amen, the reality that there is in serving Jesus. Let them know about cultivating a relationship with Jesus. Let them know that there is life after this world that there is an eternity. And the eternity that we're speaking about is not going to be a hundred years. It's not going to be a thousand years. Eternity is eternity. It will be forever. 
And so it's important for us to take the time that we are that we have now to let people know that this is temporary. We 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 spoke on Sunday uh, and we were talking uh, about that we were pilgrims and strangers traveling through this barren land that this world is not our home amen that we are just amen here temporarily and our home has been prepared for us Jesus said I go to prepare a place for you that where I am ye may be also so the, per the, the place is being prepared for each of us in the heavens. So our job here is, it, it is not just to get by, not just to eat, sleep, amen, have a job, but our, our focus must continually be, amen, to deposit in the people of this world. And when I say this world, I'm speaking of those that are in your world those that you are connected to, that you are that beacon uh, of light for them, that you are that voice of God to let them know, amen, about the God that we serve. So uh, we, we uh, uh, talked, amen, uh, in chapter one is where we're going to go back to today. And uh, uh, chapter one, verse six says, and Joseph died, all of his brothers and all that generation. And so uh, we talked uh, uh, somewhat last week about, amen, the different generations that, that uh, we've seen here in the United States from the 1900s upwards to this, this present day and how each of these uh had different um, challenges. Each of them had uh, different uh, things that they saw. Amen. And uh, we, we talked about uh, even how things differed in uh, how we, we, we um, uh, dealt in the church, how we did things in the church, uh, depending on your generation. We perhaps did things a little differently. Amen. One of the things that I don't want to say is a pet peeve of mine, but I, I do want, want to say that uh, as we grew up, uh, we, we actually dressed to come to church. <laughs> when we grew up, we had uh, three sets of clothes. Amen. There were seven of us. We had three sets of clothes. Uh, the first set was uh, for school. We had school clothes. We had play clothes and we had church clothes, amen. And, and these were not to meet. We, were, we didn't uh, wear our play clothes to church. We didn't wear our play clothes to school, but we, we, we did that in an appropriate way. And yes, God is not in, in our dress, so to speak, where you, you have to uh, 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 become uh, dressed to the T every every Sunday, but I want you to think about this, and this is just just a thought. Okay, uh, how do you feel when you wear certain clothes? Okay, um, I, I I feel differently. I feel differently uh, when I, I I purchase a new suit and I wear a new suit. I I I, I feel different. And I, I believe that it is the same with you when you put on something new, that there is a, a different mindset. Uh, when you, you go out clubbing, you have your, 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 your club clothes, okay? Uh, you have a different mindset. I, now, I, I trust I'm not <coughs> speaking to the saints going clubbing, but I want to just to make that, that, um, that difference. Um, uh, it's funny to me how, how people uh, uh, will dress for weddings and things like this. Um, they, will, they will dress uh, to go uh, to football games. They have their jerseys. They, they have their T-shirts. Uh, and it's all uh, to promote what it is that they are about to enter into. And I say um, that when we come to the house of God, we, we ought to be ready, okay, 
uh, some some of you may have have be able to do that to 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 wear whatever and and you you can come with your mind set on uh, Jesus Christ but but I can see when I look at uh, different churches and how uh, there are different churches that uh, may have a, a, a coffee and uh, they, they may have allow people to come in and and, and, and drink uh, uh, their, their their big gulps uh, you know or uh, come in and, and and do these different things uh, it, it is a different mindset it's a different mindset and uh, the the church building then does not become sacred even though the scripture clearly tells us that we are the church but it's also important for us to recognize that the world does not know Jesus Christ the world our first the world is carnal the world are carnal um, they are driven by what they touch taste see smell and hear the five the five senses that's what they're driven by so when you go into a, 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 um, a, a setting that looks just like the setting that we have when we go to a football game, uh, the, the mindset is different, okay? Uh, there's, there, there's a greater challenge to, to, to get to what it is that we are there to do. It is a difference, okay? And, I, and that's, that's, the, that's the only point I'm trying to make. Uh, how you can can focus in on Christ. For me, as as a minister, it's it. I, I feel different, amen. When I wear a shirt and tie, I feel different. When I put on a robe, I feel different. It is it is it. It seems easier for me to focus in on what God wants to say through me, and that's that's. I'm, I'm speaking about George. You're not George, okay. But I'm using that as, as an example because the, the main thing is when we come, we want to see Jesus. We want people to know Christ. So let me go back to, to the five senses. So if, if people come into the house of the Lord and um, it's dirty, okay, uh, the, uh, the, the floors aren't clean and, and everything looks like a mess, uh, th that's their first impression about Christ because they are not spiritual creatures yet. They are carnal. They are natural. They're going with uh, what their eyes see, what their ears hear, what their, what they, their, their nose smells, what their, their mouth uh, tastes. Amen. This is, is how they are responding, how uh, their hands touch. So when it comes to the house of God, we must make sure that we are engaging the five senses. And what they are seeing is something that is, is, is sacred. Uh, what they're seeing is something that is holy. What they're seeing is, is a people that love God, that, that when they, they see uh, people on our, on our faces, they see a welcoming people they they see Christ on your face. They they hear Christ in the welcome that you give them. Oh, we're glad for you to be here, Amen. The the, the touching of them, uh, shaking their hand, and saying God bless you, or giving them a hug. These are natural things. These are things of the senses. But when a person does not know God, these five senses can help them. To see God clearer, okay, and so when 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 we're bombarded by other things, uh, it, it, it can cause issues. I don't know why I I, I went that direction, but th that wasn't in my in my notes here. But uh, uh, we we shall we shall uh, move forward. All right, now let's go go to to Exodus chapter one, Exodus, Exodus chapter one. All right, 
Exodus chapter 1, uh, verse 6 of chapter 1, and Joseph died all his brothers and, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now, uh, as we spoke last week and we, we were uh, beginning to share with, with, with how uh, the Egyptians became fearful of, of the, the Israelites, is because they became overwhelmed by them because their numbers began to increase. And the Bible says that, that it, the, the increase was abundant. And they were like, <coughs> excuse me, I mentioned baby's kids. Baby's kids are kind of bad, but, but they multiply. Amen. Uh, the children of Israel, excuse me, <coughs> The children of Israel multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Verse number eight says, and now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. So here it is, uh, the new king that, that, that comes into power does not have a relationship really with the, with, um, uh, the, the children of Israel. Here, Joseph uh, it has has died and gone on uh, to be with with God, and uh, there is is no one that is is really uh, stepping up and knowing uh, the new king. Uh, and the king said to his people, "Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we." This is how the Egyptians saw the Israelites. Amen. They saw them as being mighty. They saw them as being more than them. It's important for us to, to, um, to, to, to look within ourselves and ask ourselves, how do people see you and uh, how do you see yourself? Okay, uh, in this text, the those on the out, outside saw them as being mighty, and saw them as being being many. Uh, but when you, you you look at the the, the relation or, or the the um, the generation uh, when Moses is is leading them out of of the land of Egypt, they're of a different sort they see themselves when when Joshua was was about to take them into the promised land he says uh, the 10 spies 10 of uh, of the 12 spies came back and said uh, they're mightier than we they're stronger than we uh but you find out uh later on when when um uh, it was a, uh, a Rahab Rahab her her um estimation of the people of, of, of God as she spoke to them about those that were living in the land, she says, man, those folks are scared of, of, of you uh, because they know you've got a mighty God with you. And they were afraid of them. But how the Israelites saw themselves were, we are grasshoppers in their sight when that was not how they saw them. So it's important for us to recognize how God sees us, how God sees you as an individual. How, what does God say about us? Amen. Uh, we may be small in number, but we're mighty through Jesus Christ. And so the Israelites saw uh, their enemies as stronger as um, than them. Uh, they said we were like grasshoppers. But the, t but the testimony of the Canaanites and the nations around them were afraid of them because they saw the people of God as being mighty. They saw that their God was not dwelling in tents, that their God was mighty. Amen. Um, 
they were being led by a pillar of fire by night. They were being led by a, a, a pillar of cloud by day when they needed different things, how God would raise up and God would bless them. And so there were those who saw that and saw them in the state that they were. They were the children of God and God was backing them up. Um, verse number 10, come, let us uh, dwell, uh, deal shrewdly with them lest they multiply and it happened that in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against them and so go up out of the land. They saw that because of their might, they saw because of their numbers, uh, they saw potential and the potential they saw uh, caused them to fear. They said, well, there's more of them than it is of us. So we've got to do something. Therefore, in verse number 11, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. Now notice what they had the children of Israel doing. And they, the children of Israel, built for Pharaoh supply cities, Python and Ramus. Verse number 12, but the more they afflicted them, the children of Israel, the more they multiplied and grew. It's important for you as a child of God to know that when affliction comes, when conflict comes, that is an opportunity for you to grow. Okay? It's an opportunity for, for us to grow. Uh, instead of crying about what you're going through, Cry out to God. Ask God, Lord, help me, strengthen me in this moment so that, that uh, I will be the, ve the, the vessel that you desire for me to be. You learn more about God. You, you see, uh, it, it's one thing to know his goodness, his, 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 his graciousness, amen, when he is pouring out blessings on you. That's one side of, of God that we all appreciate. We, we, we love that. We love when God is giving us this and that and the other. But if we want to really know all of God, that we want to know what the height, the depth, the breadth, and the length of God is, the length of his love is, that means that we, we must know of the other side. Amen. When we're saying that God is long suffering, how can we know about God's long suffering unless we are placed in a position that we learn how to have patience? It's one thing to say, Lord, give me patience. That's what one prayed one day. God, give me patience right now. Well, patience doesn't come that way. To learn God in his long suffering, to learn God in his patience, in his gentleness. Amen. That means that, that there are some things that are going to be, be placed before us so that we would learn of him. Amen. Do we really want to know about God? Do we really want to know about our Savior, Jesus Christ? Do we really want to, to know of his love? To know of his love means that, that you love the unlovable. To know of his love means uh, that you are, are willing to go to the cross for somebody else. To, to know his love means for you to love your neighbor as yourself. To know his kind of love is, is to, know, to go beyond what one is able uh, to give me and to look at their need and say, I am going to be uh, the supplier of their need through Jesus Christ. All right. So uh, they, the, the Pharaoh and the new king and, 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 and uh, those, his, I would say his, 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 his army uh, commanders and generals and so on and so forth, saw them as a, a, a possible threat. 
hey, if, if, if another nation comes against us, maybe they will join with that nation and then come against us. And so that caused them to have great fear. And so they began to afflict them. Now, uh, God, in knowing God, to get getting to know God, uh, God, in, in some respects, in in I believe uh, some of their minds, had been an absentee father, or a powerless God, because during this four hundred and thirty years. Uh, they they had not experienced yet the pillar of fire by day, a pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day. They hadn't experienced what they were going to. They hadn't yet experienced the 10 plagues and how God uh, uh, used Moses in that moment. Those things had not happened yet. OK, so how they viewed their their, their God perhaps was stipend. Uh, and uh, so God was, was going to uh, bring a deliverer, Moses. Now notice what is happening because of fear. Because uh, uh, the, the Egyptians feared them, uh, they didn't want them to continue to multiply. So, so this is what they did. Verse number 15 and 16, I believe this is out of the New Living uh, uh, the, the, the New King James Version, I believe, or the New Living Translation, one of them. And the king of Egypt had a talk with two uh, Hebrew midwives, one named Shipra and the other Pura. He said, now, when you deliver uh, the Hebrew women, when they're going to have a child, look at the sex of the baby. If it is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, let her live. Amen. That sounds sounds like uh, when Jesus came on the scene. Uh, uh, Herod had had put out. Listen, uh, uh, we've heard that there is is a king of the Jews that is being born. Listen. I want you to, to, to kill off all of, 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 of the boys that are, are two years and under. Man, because the desire was to, to kill off, amen, that which would be the king of the Jews. Uh, here, uh, they, they, they don't, the, the Egyptians don't want there to be more men. And this is, is uh, what the enemy has done today. The enemy doesn't want men. He doesn't want men. He doesn't want men that are, are saved. He doesn't want men that, because the men are, are to be the head of the house, the men are, are, are to be uh, the ones that are, that are leading the families. The enemy doesn't want that. So what is he doing? He's taking them out. Amen. Young men uh, through gangs and through violence and and through drugs and and this type of thing. Amen. Getting putting them, uh, having them put in prison. Amen. So that they cannot fulfill what God has desired for them to do. So that's not something that is new. We saw it in Jesus's day and, and we see it now in the book of, of, of Exodus in Moses's day. But the, the, the midwives had far more respect for God and did not do what the king of Egypt ordered. Uh, they let the baby boys live. <coughs> I, 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 this just comes to my heart right now. Our prayer, thank you, Lord. Our prayer should be, God, let the baby boys live. Let the young men live. And God, turn their minds away from uh, what the, the enemy has plotted against them. God, let the baby boys live. Amen. In our, our churches, there have always been more women than men. When you come to a church that has a lot, a strong men's presence, 
you have, amen, a strong church. For New Vision Christian Fellowship, Lord, let the young men live. God, my prayer is, is that you draw these young men, Father, from the east, the west, the north, and the south. Lord, bring them into our churches, Lord, that they may be beacon of light for other young men. Father, we pray, God, that you, you touch in a special manner, Lord, and bring the men into the church that they may be learn how to be good fathers, good husbands. Father, that they will know how to be good uncles, how to be good nephews, Lord. How to, Lord Jesus, uh, not uh, put women down, but but to lift women up, how, how to not degrade women, but to honor women. Father, I pray this in your name. Amen. Well, I wasn't planning to do that, but praise God. That's what, what I believe God is saying at this moment. So this was what was happening in the, in the day of Moses. When Moses was born, he was born under such a, a uh, order. Uh, so Moses' uh, beginning was turbulent. And the Bible says that, that his, his mother hid him for, I believe, it was three months. But, you know, after a while, babies are going to get larger and larger and larger. And uh, we find out how, amen, uh, how his mother uh, told uh, Moses' sister to take him and took him and put him in an ark. Um, let's see, verse number 22 says, And Pharaoh charged all the people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was goodly, a goodly uh, child, she hid him three months. Uh, and when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrush and covered it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. So, it is interesting here that that uh, the the men or the young men that the, the babies were were to be cast into uh, the, the the rivers. Well, uh, in the rivers uh, uh, you would uh, drown in a river, or uh, we're we're not speaking about uh, uh, the Mississippi River, uh, of course, which is is very very large. Uh, but we're speaking of rivers such as the Nile River, uh, which was known to have things as, as crocodiles and other um, uh, predators that were there. They, the, the, the king said, toss them in there. Of course, the end result was that, that the, 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 the children, the boys would die in. Well, uh, when, uh, Moses' mother could not hide him any longer. She did. She put him in uh, the river, but she had fashioned an ark, a man out of bulrush and pitched it, the Bible says, uh, within and without, a man with, with slime so that it would not, um, uh, it, it wouldn't wreck. <laughs> it, 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 it wouldn't just uh, my, my, my words are, are not there where I need them to be, uh, but it would not collapse and the child die. Well, uh, God has an ark. Remember uh, of, of another ark that was built with gopher wood? A man, that was Noah. When Noah had built an ark and eight souls were saved in that, that ark, a man, these eight people would be the ones that we're going to procreate, amen, for uh, our present world, amen, our present population. And uh, here was coming 
in this day, uh, one that was going to be a deliverer uh, of the children of Israel. So you don't you don't know when you when you you see little children and you say oh this is they're so cute you know or or oh that 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 one is so mean and nasty or what have you, amen. It's it's important for us to continue to lift them up, amen, and to protect them, cover them, amen, with with your prayers, cover them uh, with with uh, your 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 admonition of God. Cover them with the knowledge of God. And I guarantee if we do this, amen, that that seed that is being planted, it may fall upon stony ground one day, but you keep planting seeds uh, and they'll fall one day on good ground. And, and as it is, it is watered, God will give growth. God will give increase. So Miriam was his, uh, Moses' sister and does as her, 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 her mother had, had ordered. And the verse number four says, and his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done with him. And the daughter of Pharaoh, there's nothing uh, insignificant with God. God has a plan. And here was God's plan. And the daughter of Pharaoh, the new king, came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when the maid opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept. Amen. And she had, uh, this is uh, the Pharaoh's daughter, and she had compassion on this little child and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. So she knew that it wasn't an Egyptian child. She knew that it was a, a Hebrew child. And she also knew the orders of her daddy. Then uh, she said, uh, then said she, then said his sister to the Pharaoh's daughter, uh, shall I go and call uh, to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee? And the Pharaoh's daughter uh, said to her, go. And the maid went. And where did, where did she go? She went right to the baby's mama. Amen. And the Pharaoh's daughter said to the baby's mama, not knowing it was a baby's mama, said, take this child away and nurse it for me. And I will give you uh, wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Look at God's provision. Look at that. Uh, here is, is a child that is destined, is, uh, is by means of the Pharaoh supposed to die. That is put in the, in, in the water that is supposed to die. Look at God. Amen. You don't know the end from the beginning, but God declares the end from the beginning. God had set, had this a setup. Look what God does. God has, amen, uh, the, uh, the Pharaoh's daughter says, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to bathe in the river at a particular day, at a particular time. And at the, the same particular day, at the same particular time, God has the mother of the child, Moses, amen, placing him in the ark. And, and where she places him in is downstream from where Pharaoh's daughter is. Look, that's, that, that's God at work. And so uh, God has it not only so that, that, that Moses' mother uh, does not lose, does not never see her child again. God has it set so that she is going to nurse the child that was slain, slain to be dead, God sets it up that she is going to nurse her child, okay, and is going to get paid for it. Look at that. She nurses her child at a time in which, as I said earlier, that they, there is a hard taskmaster and they're, 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 they're just 
waging, amen, a terrible affliction upon the children of Israel, God has Moses being, being nurtured by his mother and she is being paid for it. My God, that's something else. Amen. God knows how, how, how to pay, pay you for the things that you do. Amen. I want you to know that. And God, God's going to set some stuff up for you. <clears throat> you keep doing what you're doing for God. Keep, keep on doing for him. And amen. He'll have somebody else to pay your wages. Praise the Lord. And the child grew and she brought him unto, uh, unto Pharaoh's daughter um, and he became the Pharaoh's daughter's son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of water. Uh, that's interesting. Again, we talk about names. Uh, I, I, in, in my studies, I have not heard perhaps if, if you if you know this, perhaps you'll put it in the, the comment section uh, uh, that if if Moses's mother ever gave him a Hebrew name, um, we, we find that that she had him and hid him for uh, three months. But we um, uh, don't know what his Hebrew name was. Uh, what we see throughout his life is his name as being Moses. Amen. Uh, you see things a little different when you, when you see the, uh, the Israel, uh, the uh, Judah, when it was uh, years, many, many years later when uh, the Babylonians came in and took um, the, uh, the skilled uh, young men uh, there. They, they took, here's another place where they took the young men captive. Well, you found, found out that, that there was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, but these were the, the, the names that, that uh, the Babylonians had given them. But um, uh, their names were uh, as Belshazzar, and there was, there was, um, there was um, Michal, Michael, um, there was um, Azariah. Uh, these were, were the Hebrew names. Well, I don't want to get off into that. Let, let me move forward because, again, I'm going to run out of time. I, but I like this lesson. Amen. Um, so Moses is, 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 is the deliverer. His, his life is set up. For the first 40 years of his life, Moses had been schooled as an Egyptian. Moses had been uh, schooled in the house of Pharaoh. So for 40 years, Moses had all of the, the, uh, the, the, the knowledge he, he, he learned of um, the, the, the Egyptian gods. He, he was schooled in, in mathematics and, and, and in science, and, and he had, had a great education as it it, it refers to him as being in the house of Pharaoh. Uh, but then there's another 40 years. The 40 years comes uh, when, when uh, he learns, uh, uh, Moses learns more about his, his, who he really is, that he is indeed uh, a Hebrew. He, he, he learns that, that, uh, uh, these people that have been uh, out and have been under bondage and uh, are his brothers and sisters. Amen. That, that, that he is, is not an Egyptian, but he is an Israelite. And you, you, you find out um, uh, when uh, uh, there a quarrel takes place, uh, read this in, in your own leisure, uh, a quarrel takes place, uh, uh, between Moses and Moses sees a battle going on and he steps in uh, and one is an Egyptian and uh, Moses kills the Egyptian. Amen. He, he kills him and um, he, he buries him somewhere. Um, the laws are, are, are uh, for, for him as well. 
So he, he, he hid uh, that he had murdered someone. And um, uh, him being uh, kind of pompous, uh, uh, him being uh, uh, the, the Pharaoh's uh, son, uh, one day sees two of his brethren, two, two of the Israelites that are quarreling. And he stands up with, with his self-righteous self and, and tells them, brethren, you, you should not be uh, fighting among yourselves, you know. Uh, but uh, they knew something about him. <laughs> they knew, uh, one of them say, well, what are you going to do? You, you going to kill us like you did that Egyptian and, and, and buried him? <gasps> All of a sudden, uh, his, his past, Moses' past has caught up with him. It, that's why we got to be careful, brothers and sisters. Amen. All of us have a past. All right. And so we should not be so pompous now that we are saved, now that we know the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to put someone else down that does not know him. We want to put down someone that, that is doing drugs, someone that is smoking, someone that is carousing, someone that is, is, is doing things that are ungodly. Can I tell you this? Uh, with, if they don't know the Lord, they're, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Okay. If they don't know the Lord, if they're ungodly, the ungodly are going to do ungodly things. All right. Uh, so so they, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Man, they backbiting, they, 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 they're clawing, they, they're, 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 they're hitting one another or stabbing each other in the back. But they're doing what they're supposed to do. Amen. When your son or your daughter is, is, is not saved and they're acting a fool, guess what? They are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Why? Because they don't have a relationship with God. That's why it's so important for us to get them to know your God. It's important for them to see that there is a way out of their uh, situation there is, there is a life better than what they are experiencing now. Amen. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Amen. So we need to do what we're supposed to do. All right. Not look down on them. Here was Moses looking down on them. You know, brethren, let's not, let's not uh, do that. Well, he recognizes that he is not <clears throat> all that he thinks he is. <clears throat> He's not all that in a bag of chips. He's got flaws within himself. For, for uh, Moses had murder in his heart, a man, and killed that Egyptian. So Moses flees for his, his, his life. He, he leaves the house at the age of 40. 40, um, the number 40 is, 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 is interesting. The number 40 uh, notes transition. Again, the number 40 notes transition. So there is a transition in Moses' life where he leaves the house of Pharaoh. And with that, he, had, he, he carries with him knowledge. That's one thing that we've got to always remember. Amen. When people uh, get saved, they carry with them the knowledge of the world. And God can use that. All right. Uh, I remember uh, some some years ago, uh, there was there was a, a, a man that came to our church and uh, basically uh, he, he was a, basically a, a, a swindler. OK, he was one that had that had a game. Well, there were folks in, in, in the church that that knew that kind of behavior and said to, to me, pastor. Uh, that man is, is, is up to nothing but no, no good. They were able to fall back on what they had learned before they got saved. And then that became, a, a man informational for someone who had not experienced that. There are, are, are young, there are men who, a man can spot someone who is just out to, to, to get uh, in, a, in a, a, a young lady's dress. Uh, 
there are those who experience that. They had been out there. They had been that, done that, got a T-shirt. And now they bring that information and they're able to use it for God's glory and for God's honor. In other words, they're able, amen, to, to, to be an example or, or to educate others so that when they see that, they will see that they, they need to protect themselves. Uh, everything is, is not the way it, it appears. Amen. Uh, and so uh, Moses took with him the knowledge that he had of the Egyptians, the knowledge that he had of Pharaoh, the knowledge that he had of Egyptian government. He was able to take that with him. So 40 years he was with them. So for the next 40 years, he is on the backside of the desert. He is, he is learning how to be a sheep herder. He's learning, amen, things that he did not know. He was pampered in the, the house of Pharaoh. But now he, he is learning how to get out there and work himself. And it's during that time that he's able to learn more about this God. Every generation must know God for themselves. Moses had to learn God for, and so forth. 40 years he was, he was there. For 40 years, amen, it's during that time that he uh, uh, was able to, uh, to really to develop his relationship with, with his, his, his brother Aaron, his sister, uh, uh, his, his sister Miriam, amen, the family, he, he marries, and, and all of these things take place in that 40 years. So he's learning another side. God is teaching him about leading people while he's on the other side. Then God brings him back. Amen. I believe it's in the third chapter or fourth chapter of Exodus where he learns what his mission is that God says, I have prepared you these now 80 years for 80 years, I have prepared you. And now I am going to send you back uh, to Egypt. And I want you uh, to go to the, the Pharaoh with a decree from me. Let my people go. Um, he gets Moses' attention. You, you remember, uh, amen, uh, when Moses uh, sees the bush on fire. Now, there's nothing uh, really um, uh, not, not typical about a, a, a bush being on fire. Amen. There could have been a, a, um, an electric, uh, a, a lightning strike and caused the, it, it to burn. But the thing was, was that it was on fire but it was not being consumed. It, 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 it stayed there. The, the, the fire was still going. And um, he looked aside, caught his attention. And now God is speaking to him with what it is that he wants him to do. He wants him to go back to Egypt. And he wants him to be used as a vessel a man to deliver the people of God. He wants him to deliver a message to Pharaoh and he wants them to deliver a message to the people. Amen. It is here that they must know their God for themselves. And so God uses Pharaoh, uh, uses Moses and has taken 80 years of his life so that he is prepared for what he is about to do. Hey, Moses tells him, look, I'm, I'm, I, 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 and so uh, where you are right now is right where 
you are supposed to be spiritually in your life, the age that you are, with the children that you have, the job that you have. There is nothing insignificant with God. Amen. There is a reason for each of these things. And it's 8 o'clock and I'm out of time. Wow. All right. We're going to pick this up on next week. Uh, we're, we're, we'll be in the, I believe it's the third chapter, third chapter, third and fourth chapter of, of Exodus as we, we, we see how God wants this new generation to know about God. God bless you. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we've had today to come uh, to, to speak to the people of God. And Lord, perhaps there's someone that is watching that does not know you right where they are. It's an altar. And, and we, we pray that they pray the sinner's prayer. Father, for you can you can heal them, heal their, their, their hearts, their emotions, their souls, God, in the name of Jesus. Now grant unto to them, Lord Jesus, your favor. As we leave this place, Lord, let the word that went forth today fall on good ground, that we may grasp something from the word that we will be better. I'll be better today than I was yesterday. I'll be better tomorrow than I am today. I'll be better next week than I am this week. Father, I'll be better next month than I am this month. Father, I just pray that, that you will grow in us as we learn you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our in-person services are on Sundays at 2 p.m. The address of our church is 9350 East Brown Road here in Mesa, Arizona. Amen. We would love to have you come out and be with us. This certainly is the day that God has made, and we trust that you are rejoicing in it. On tomorrow... Amen. We have our midweek Selah, our little sing-along. Amen. And we would love to have you you, you tune in uh, for that. You don't have to have a melodious voice to give God praise. You don't have to be an accomplished musician to give God praise. All you need is to have a joyful noise. God knows us and, and God uh, will be blessed. Amen. As we bless him. And amen. I think that your uh, burdens will be lifted when you begin to stop thinking about what you're going through and start giving God praise. All right. God bless you in Jesus name. Bishop George McCree. God bless you.